I want to invite Bohush, Dr. Bohush Zivchek to come forward. And as he comes, I want to, he's going to give the testimony tonight before the bishop comes to speak. And uh, Bohush has become, I've known Bohush since he's been a young man. He's still a young man, and he's a wonderful brother. But when, during communist time in Slovakia, when it was very difficult to be a Catholic and to be a Christian, there was heroic work going on by people like Father Michael Zimkowski, who I mentioned, at the time was ordained, but secretly ordained. His parents didn't even know he was a priest. And he would meet clandestined with these young people. Sometimes they'd have to meet in the woods and other places. And he brought these young people to the Lord. And I don't want to tell the whole story, but Bohush is a key part of that. Bohush is married. He's got four chi- lovely wife, four children. He's leading a community of young people, young married people, young single people. And they're doing missions Besides having their own jobs and other things, they do missions into the former Soviet Union. And he's, he's like shepherding that whole flock. And it's one of the most dynamic cross-generational um, clergy and laity kind of combined works of Catholic evangelization I've seen anywhere in the world that I've traveled in. And it started with this mentorship and disciples. So I asked Bohush to come and share with you his exciting story tonight for a few minutes. So let's welcome Dr. Bohush Zivchek. Good evening. Uh, I'm so excited. I've been excited a few days uh, when I learned that I am going to share with you, uh, not because of the TV, but because of the... <laughs> this, is, this is the youngest audience I ever had in the United States. Really. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad that there are some young people in the United States, too. Uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, yeah, uh, it's um, it's still like a dream for me to be here uh, because uh, I'm coming from uh, from from a place uh, in the middle of nowhere in the Slovakian mountains. Slovakia. Uh, I don't know whether you know that there is a, such a country, but it's a heart of Europe. Geographically, it's a very small country, five million people, and in that uh, small country there is a very poor region, which is northeast, where it's uh, uh, difficult to get a job and everything is difficult. So I'm coming from this place, from the tiny town, where is um, hardly nothing regarding the cultural life or whatever. Uh, but I'm telling this for a reason that uh, God uh, likes small places and um, he always did and uh, I am a testimony, a witness of it. Uh, I was born in 1968 which was a deep, deep communism time in my country in in this part of the world behind the Iron Curtain and as a country, we were very isolated, more isolated than, than maybe Poland. So everything was forbidden. As Peter said, uh, I was born there, so I, I didn't know that there is a, a different world. I, I thought this is like it should be. And uh, I grew up in a believing family, but we were trying to uh, practice our faith in a secret. So my mom was a teacher, he couldn't attend the church officially, so when she wanted to go to the, to the church, she had to go to the very small village somewhere else that nobody knows her. And, uh, but this was normal for us. And when I got to the teenagehood, I began to think, this is too complicated for me. Everybody was tol- telling us that you have no future as a believer, so if you want to have a future, just join the Communist Party, and then you have a great future. Uh, and I wasn't sure, but there was a time when uh, everything was very light, very shiny from the you know, invitation from the party, and very dark, and very, uh, I would say, with no hope, to stay there in the church. 
<clears throat> and that time, I think I was on uh, on the way out of the church, and and also because of uh, uh, the personal faith w uh, in my life at that time was rather traditional. But I met a guy uh, that called me on my bike, and he asked me a strange question: whether I would like to join a small group. And uh, <laughs> I said, uh, I don't really have a time. And he said, there, there will be some girls too. <laughs> so I said, OK, <laughs> let's try. Uh, and, uh, and this was this man. I would like to invite him here just for you to see that this is a real man. Michal Potsem. <clears throat> yeah. When you get older, somebody else leads you. <laughs> <laughs> so this was the guy. He was uh, he's 20 years older than me, uh, and uh, in that time he was an engineer in the factory. And uh, I knew him. He was like kind of strange guys, you know, uh, taking care of the youth. I heard about him, but when he called me, I didn't know who is he, who was he. And, uh, and so I decided to join that small group. It was a group of six to ten people. I'm telling this because uh, in the, uh, very difficult cir circumstances for the faith, and uh, where, where there was no hope for to pro practice your faith publicly, there was the only way we could uh, share I our faith. So we began to meet in a small group, in a, secretly in the houses or in the forest, in the uh, small uh, uh, chads there in, in the mountains. And, and we were reading the scripture, we were sharing the faith, we were doing the retreats. I didn't know that he was a priest. He couldn't tell this publicly because he would end up in a prison. And this way, <clears throat> which seems or was meant to be an obstacle or the, the destroying of the church by communism, it created a special occasion to create a relationship, a bond between us that uh, I think it would be not really possible otherwise. So we became friends. And he led me through all my teenage years, crazy years, doing crazy stuff, as usually people do at the time. And uh, he, he was crying often because of me. <coughs> and, um, but he, he was determined and he stays with me. It has been 40, 35 years from that time now. And we've been together almost every day. I was watching his life from everyday perspective. And he couldn't tell me that he's a priest. And there was a, a small group together also with some girls and all the staff around. And uh, so when the revolution came in 1999, after many years, I, and we learned that he's a priest. Suddenly, completely new situation uh, opened. And uh, there were people talking to Father Michael and telling him this was dangerous. This was not good. W you were too close to lay people. They uh, didn't uh, honor you as a priest, but the opposite happened. Because I was looking back to do all those years and I didn't remember one situation that would discredit him as a priest. Yeah. So, um, for me, this was the biggest testimony of life with Christ. And f for me personally, as a man, this was the older man that was holding the faith, even in a difficult circumstances, and he was faithful. Faithful to the Lord, faithful to us. And then, 
we were doing stuff in the secret, never thought that it is going to change. The communism seems to be unshakable. And suddenly, like this, the whole atmosphere changed, the whole country changed, all doors were open. Father Michael could stop his working in a factory and w went back to the monastery. The monastery was destroyed, the old building. And we were thinking, okay, what's now? What's next? I was newly married. Um, I married a girl from this small group. <laughs> so the small group is very effective. <laughs> and um, uh, I was trying uh, many years. <laughs> uh, I, I'm, uh, but I am very glad that uh, I have a person next to me that is uh, wiser, more holy, and that is right from the beginning with me in the whole thing. So God has given us a gift of marriage with the understanding of this calling to be a missionary. And um, when, we get, when we get married, usually the parents are... Uh, telling you the wise words that you should take a good job, you should, uh, you know, take care of your family. And at that time, we decided to start in that monastery. I, I felt that I want to do something for God 100%, but there was no option, no opportunity. I don't know how it is now in, in, the, in the church here, but it's still quite rare in Slovakia that layman is full-time for the church. But 20 years ago, it was nonsense. And Father Michael said, I have a lot of job for you, a lot of work, but no money. <laughs> and uh, so we were discussing this and praying this with Alana, my wife, and we, we've taken a risk. So... I decided to leave my job and go to the monastery and we continue this work with youth and all the stuff we do, we did in, in a communist time. And we live uh, for two years without uh, any salary there. But I think that God took seriously this, this decision and slowly began open the door to uh, other places, other people. And uh, I'm telling this because um, uh, I want to show you how important it is to have a, a master, that you are a disciple. And uh, I, I didn't know what is discipleship in that time, for many years. But uh, I experience it every day. And discipleship is something in my blood. It is a gift to me, but now I can understand how important it is to have somebody next to you, older than you, stronger than you, but that is with you almost every day. You can return to him. You can talk to him, not about the, uh, football only, but, uh, <laughs> but also about life. And uh, for Father Michael, as a priest, it is also a big sacrifice of sharing his life with lay people. I don't know how it is here, but it is quite often that uh, the priest lives their secret life in a parish house. And they go out on the public, on the pulpit, they, they preach, and then go back to the parish house. This is a risk to let people come closer, to see my prayer life, to see my relationships with people, how I behave. But this is something that is giving life. And I was blessed to experience this every day for 35 years. And it's working. Because if not for Michael and his life, neither myself, neither my wife, neither the whole fellowship uh, would not be existing. Because we would disappear in the world. But because of this faithfulness, because of this discipleship relationship, we stay together, we 
even with the small children, even with all the difficulties that marriages are going through, we still feel called to go for a mission. It's not easy. It's a difficult to manage the time and, and the heaviness of uh, being away from the family, from the, from the spouses. But at the same time, it's a great blessing to see God present. And God is paying back richly, richly. I, I wouldn't regret one day since that time. Thank you.